Welcome back to EBRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and we're talking today because Jordan and I had a sit down at the end of 2021. We made our predictions for what would happen and not happen in the camera industry throughout 2022. And uh, if you haven't seen that video already, definitely check it out. The link will be in the description below, but I gotta warn you, Jordan's audio is pretty bad because his microphone fell off his shirt and it rattled around his belly button. It sounds horrible. And it would have to be something that actually excites you. But if you can get through that, it's worth watching. In fact, our first prediction for 2022 is that Jordan would do better with his audio going forward, and actually he did. But what about our predictions for the camera industry for 2022? Were we psychic or suck it? Were we Nostradamus or not Stradamus? Let's find out now. I think that a 100 megapixel full frame sensor, that's kind of the new benchmark to break, and I think 2022 is the year they're gonna break. Okay, so 100 megapixel full frame sensor, that didn't happen, unfortunately, but we did still have some interesting improvements. I mean, APS-C cameras went up to now 40 megapixels, that was a big jump, but as far as full frame goes, Canon didn't release anything higher than 24 megapixels, and Sony with their A7R5 basically reused the 60 megapixel sensor, so we're gonna have to wait for next year. I really think that we are going to see an update on the Panasonic S1H. Looking at this, sadly, Jordan's prediction that there'd be a S2H with a new stacked full frame sensor just didn't happen. We would have loved to have seen that, but there's something else here I just want to play for you. It's interesting, we know the GH6 is going to have a stacked sensor. Oh, so that's two that we got wrong. Jordan wanted a stacked chip in the GH6. That didn't happen, but at least we redeem ourselves slightly because we said Panasonic wouldn't release any photocentric cameras, and sadly, that was true. No mechanical shutter. We're gonna see that become more and more prevalent in 2022. Yeah, we thought that much like the Nikon Z9, we'd see a lot of cameras come out where they're ditching mechanical shutters completely. Now, interestingly enough, that didn't happen, but we did see a lot of improvements in readout speed on some of the sensors. It's just the cameras kept mechanical shutters in there. And no, Jordan, the FX30 doesn't count. Oh. Apple or Blackmagic, give in, stop being so stubborn and support the other person's raw recording format. Okay, so we've seen there, Jordan Ever the Optimist was wrong. You know, Apple's not gonna support B-Raw. Da Vinci's not gonna support ProRes Raw. I said that Apple's an evil conglomerate would never share any of their goods, and unfortunately I was right with my prediction, but uh, looks like it's gonna be VHS and beta going forward for a while. I think they will make an affordable full-frame camera, but it's gonna be aimed firmly at the vlog crew. Okay, so yeah, sadly, here's another one we got wrong. Jordan and I both thought that there'd be full-frame vlog-centric cameras coming out, like a full-frame Sony ZV-E10 kind of thing, but that did not materialize at all. We're gonna see Canon's RF and Nikon Z mount starting to release a whole bunch of affordable consumer mid-range kind of lenses. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda call this like we sorta did get it right, not really. Okay, so we didn't see a lot of affordable lenses come out. I mean, Canon released the 24 millimeter macro, that's one example, that was nice. And you know, I was looking for affordable telephotos, Nikon released the 400 mil 4.5, the 800 mil 6.3, which are, relatively affordable given their focal lengths, but I mean, we were really wanting to see like this renaissance of 300 to $500 full frame lenses that were good, but light and compact, and, and that just didn't happen. And then, you know, Canon shut down any third party lens support this year, so that really, so God, we're bad at this. Now, a lot of people are making a prediction that 2022 is gonna be the end of the DSLR. I honestly think they're gonna make a lot more. All right, so after watching that, I think we actually got one prediction right. I mean, you know, Jordan was saying the K1 Mark III isn't gonna happen this year, and it certainly didn't. And, you know, then I say this here, just incrementally improving SLRs with a couple new features, putting a new name on it. Yeah, and you know what? Pentax came through for us. They came with a KF, couple new features, basically the same camera, renamed, and that's exactly what happened. And I think we're both right that still nobody really cares that much, so. We're, we're winning one, winning one. Out of what, seven? Yeah, out of like seven. Yeah, we're doing, we're still doing very bad. Okay, so we ended our predictions video with a speed round where I just asked Jordan quick questions on product lines. Will they stick around? Will they go away? And so let's uh, watch those clips and then I'll just give you guys speed answers. Sigma full frame cameras, FPL and Foveon sensors. I think they might be done. Okay, so I think Jordan was right here. I mean, we've seen some press announcements on some new Sigma sensors, but really nothing has materialized. Canon EOS M, that whole system, much beloved. 
Uh, I think that's gonna go too. Yeah, so sadly we really haven't seen any Canon EOS M's, but uh, we did predict that accurately. But look at this next one here. Are they gonna make APS-C sensors in an RF lens mount camera? I think they're gonna make a super cheap full frame RF mount. I don't know if they'll do APS-C, I don't Damn. think they'll. Oh, so Jordan got this one completely wrong. We did in fact see two APS-C RF mount cameras come out back to back and uh, they've actually been doing quite well. GoPros. I think they'll hang on for a couple more years, but I think that whole action camera market is just collapsing. Like a, like a <laughs> supernova, right, okay. So GoPro has actually come out with some new cameras. The action industry is still trudging along. Maybe we're a little bit too pessimistic on this. And, and in fact, that GoPro 11 was actually a really interesting and capable camera. Pentax. Pentax will live forever. They will soar like a phoenix. No, I, I think they're going to be the only guys making interesting DSLRs, and I think that's a really good niche for them. So I don't know, Jordan. Pentax living forever and soaring like a phoenix. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but, you know, they're pulling through. They're doing okay. We did see the Pentax KF come out and not a very exciting camera, but... Pentax is certainly going to survive at least until 2023. Leica, see Pentax. All right. <laughs> Soaring like a phoenix. <laughs> now, in regards to Leica, actually, I think they're having a pretty strong year. I mean, they released the M11, which is my favorite Leica M camera to date. And then they also re-released their venerable uh, M6. I mean, these are an interesting way of going both very modern and respecting your past traditions. So I think Leica is doing great this year. Micro Four Thirds. So I think Micro Four Thirds is going to see a big bump this year too. So this last prediction is very interesting and I think we're going to end this on a high note because there was a lot of naysayers out there that were kind of thinking Micro Four Thirds was dying. Frankly, I think actually it was one of their best years. I mean, we saw the GH6 come out, OM System released the OM1, which is a very innovative camera, the OM5. There's lots of glass. So I think actually 2022 is one of the strongest years we've ever seen for Micro Four Thirds. Okay, so yeah, you know, as far as our predictions go, we're kind of Nostradamus and we really did suck it. But when it comes to will product lines live or die, I think we're actually doing great. So you can still trust us. You should still listen to us. You should subscribe to our channel right now because the new year's coming up and we're going to have our predictions for 2023 and you won't want to miss that and you won't if you click that subscription now. Otherwise, please leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about 2023 and what happened this year. We'd love to see that insight as well. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you soon for another episode of DPRU TV.